from your local election headquarters, this is Eyewitness Newsmakers. Welcome from your local election headquarters. This is Newsmakers. I'm Jane Ann Bugda along with Andy Mahalshik. And this program is designed to take a look at the local political scene in northeastern and central Pennsylvania. And we thought it would be a good idea to begin with the recent election. So we're going to turn to our political eyewitness news analysts, Dr. David Sosar, who is a uh, professor of political science at King's College and a member of Hazleton City Council. Thank you. And David Yonkai, who is a political blogger with the wildly popular LULAC Political Letter. Gentlemen, thank you both for being with us today. Um, election thank you very much. Election yes, Day, uh, we value your opinions on, uh, on elections, so we're going to talk a little bit first about the mayor races. We have some changes coming in the new year. And uh, first, in Wilkes-Barre, um, Tony George, mayor-elect, um, there was, in the beginning there, there was going to be some write-ins. Your opinions on the uh, Wilkes-Barre? Well, first. thank you, uh, d uh, you Professor. Um, uh, doctor, uh, the thing is, with the Tony George race for mayor, um, everybody thought the night before that there was going to be a significant writing campaign. And as a matter of fact, I was on the phone with a couple of political experts in Wilkesbury, and they had the spreadsheets out. And they were saying that if Tom Layton got a good writing vote and that if other people got a writing vote, because people were some council candidates who were undecided in the election were being asked who who they should support for mayor they were saying well vote for me and what happened was we looked at the figures that we had and we figured that if the per first person who had 3,000 was going to win the election for mayor of Wilkesbury. Tony George has had an interesting journey. He had a primary where he had anonymous uh, mailers going against him and the very fact that he coalesced his team and also got some support from the George Brown campaign that said well. But you know what? The big thing with the Tony George campaign was law and order and you can't beat a police chief when you have such a crime rate in the city of Wilkesbury. I was going to ask you about that. I mean, we were talking in both mayoral races, Hazelden, what we're focusing on today, and Wilkesbury. People want to feel safe, and they want to know who's going to protect me. Whether it's 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 is reality's perception or not, that's what the, they they want to hear. And I thought Tony George had an advantage going in over Frank Sork. But in all in all intents and purposes, what chance does a Republican have in, in Wilkesbury? Well, that was one of the questions that was asked. There hasn't been a Republican. Uh, mayor in Wilkes-Barre for 55 years now. Uh, so uh, one of the things that, that obviously Tony George had in his favor was the the, re the uh, Democratic uh, uh, registration within the town. Uh, but I have to agree with Dave. One of the underlying currents that you'll find, I think, in every mayoral race that we talk about is the, the fact of crime and violence and, and who's going to address it. Uh, Tony George just came right out of the gate and said uh, from the... Uh, 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 primary uh, when he won that he was going to going to hit the hot spots again he was going to take care of uh, using his same kind of tactics they had used in days gone by and he was going to make the, the uh, city safe again and he had a, a plan which he tried to put on out um, right now uh, I listened to uh, some of his uh, uh, speech the night of the election and uh, you know he's ready to go he's he, he's not taking any time off he said that he wanted to get back to uh, the next two weeks and work out more plans uh, get together with people that were going to address the major issues and uh, you know I, I, I wish him well in that uh, wilkes Bear is a tough town right now with some of the issues of crime and violence and I think Tony George really needs to work uh, with his chief uh, uh, I, being from Hazleton, I think there's a lot more commonality and I think there's a lot more relationship there. Yeah. Uh, Dave, you might want to comment on that too, that, that a lot of people maybe uh, haven't really thought about when you start talking about what some of the crimes and uh, violence happen to be. And you know, covering it on a daily basis, we can tell you from, from my perspective especially, there's a lot of connection between the criminal element in Hazleton and in the city of Wilkesbury. Yes. Direct connection. And we've right. seen with uh, Frank DeAndre in Hazleton yes. uh, and Bob Hughes in Wilkesbury now, and before that, Jerry DeSoy, a big time connection that's helped, helped uh, right. solve some of those crimes. Right, exactly. And you know, while we're still in Wilkesbury, let's look to uh, Tony Brooks. 
is a Republican who was uh, elected to the council. That was an incredible campaign. Tony Brooks ran a social media campaign, and plus, he has very passionate supporters. I was stunned at the number of people who would who knew that I had a political block, and they'd come up and say, "What about Tony? Tony has an event this week. Tony has an event this week." And it was very passionate. And plus, if you take a look at the margin of which he won, again the night before, everybody thought it's going to be maybe. 20, 25 votes, and that he might squeak by. He won by 70 to 30 percent. That is the mandate. First Republican city council member since the 1980s with Jack Jones, and prior to that with Frank Drenczewski. Incredible. You know, I also give him credit. I think he used his social media uh, much better than many other candidates did, but I've got to give him a hand as well. I'm old school, and I like to go and knock on doors of of individual voters and ask them for, for their vote. He took the B section of Wilkes-Barre, uh, which was his district, and he knocked on every door within that district. Uh, uh, mentioned at the, in his speeches that he had, he had, had, had knocked on 2,000 doors. Uh, when you personally hand a card to somebody and you show that you are that interested in their ideas mm -hmm. and their thoughts, that's a winning combination. The social media for the people, the young people, and, and uh, uh, for those <laughs> not so young who love mm -hmm. to use it like yep. you. Uh, but uh, the fact is that to, to, to hit the middle like that, I think, I think was masterful. And it showed in his, in his uh, uh, vote count. And the important thing about the door-to-door -door was that he actually did follow up on Facebook. Yes. Yes. And, you know, they would send messages, okay, Tony came by your house. What could we do to get you out? Mm -hmm. Really, so it was the a new age of uh, campaign. yeah. campaigning. And you know what? I got to hand it to, and we, but just for a second back to Tony George, he was doing the same thing. When he would go uh, the door to door, he would send out the messages. If you check his website, his his Facebook page, and that, what he was doing was announcing to people, mm -hmm. "I'm going to be in this section of Wilkesbury. If you want to come and meet and talk about the issues on this Saturday or that Sunday." Yeah. And so the effects of social media and campaigns is really beginning to take off, in, in, even in this area. Well, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll discuss the Hazleton mayor race, and we'll also take a look at the district attorney races in our region. This is from your local election headquarters. This is Newsmakers. I want them to know that I will not give up the fight to keep our streets safe. We have a great record. Over the past four years, we've done so much, and we will continue to do a lot for our county, and we will continue to fight to keep our, our kids, our seniors, everybody safe in Luzerne County. There are uh, several goals that I have is first to bring justice to everybody in Pike County and to keep protecting their families and making Pike County the safe and nice place it is to live. Welcome back to Newsmakers from your local election headquarters. Andy Mahalshit, J.M. Bugta, Dr. Dave Sozar, and David Yonkai from the LULAC Political uh, Letter. We are talking about politics and a lot to talk about mm -hmm. in northeastern Pennsylvania. Let's go back to the Hazelden Mayor oil race. Uh, Jeff Cassatt defeats uh, Jack Monday. Both were council people. Your take on that, Dr. Sozar? I, uh, I, I, I thought that Jeff ran a, a, a very organized, uh, a very good race. Um, he... There was a little negativity that got into it, but but having said and above and beyond that, uh, it was a it was a good solid race on his part. He knew what he wanted to do. He knew how he had to do it, and. Uh, he succeeded. Uh, it was one of the more expensive races, I will say. Uh, I'll be interested to take a look at some of the final reporting uh, uh, election returns on it, but uh, congratulations to him. He ran a great race. It was a blending of the old and new. He uh, invoked the name of the late uh, Mayor Ford. Okay, mm -hmm. and he also uh, talked about the uh, uh, the newest uh, crime. Crime was a big thing that he actually mm -hmm. uh, focused in on. And he also had a political professional from Florida who did his flyers, yes. and they were kind of impactful. And I think crime, you have to take a look at what crime... Uh, as we talked about in Wilkesbury, that was like a major factor. As in Williamsport, there were seven unsolved, there were seven murders in Williamsport, and Gabe Campani talked about uh, came, Gabe Campana talked about that in his campaign. So I think Mr. Cassette and Mr. Campana uh, actually uh, dovetailed on the crime issue, and that helped them. And Campana won a third term, third for, term. For, for mayor there. Yeah. Um, and 
as we continue on into uh, Luzerne County, the, the DA's race was another uh, one that was uh, Stephanie Salvantis getting reelected, facing uh, Attorney Vito DeLuca. Your thoughts on that? Again, I, I thought uh, uh, Salvantis ran a, a, uh, a very structured, very organized race, uh, very professional. Uh, she hit all the parts that she needed to. Uh, she talked about her experience now in in meeting with Crime Watch. She talked about uh, uh, Kevin's law. She talked about all the things that she had had done within these last four years that rang a bell uh, very well with a lot of the voters. Uh, I, I, there was a, a name recognition there now within the last four years that I think Attorney DeLuca had a hard time uh, really challenging at this point. And so, you know, the, the vote had to go to her. And before, well, David, I'm sorry, would you agree that in uh, four years ago, Sal Vantis beat Jackie Busto Carroll, yes. yeah. and, and many said that she, because she wasn't unknown, relatively speaking, that aided her. Well, the difference, well, it aided her last time, but the difference between 2011 and this year is that this year she had a running mate. And her running mate was her record. And when I've seen, I saw her, I, I saw her at a couple of events. And what she did is she presented that record. And she said, this is what the district attorney's office did. This is not what I did. She said, this is what the district attorney's office accomplished. And the way that she presented it was fascinating to me. Because what she did is she never stood in front of a podium. She walked across the podium back and forth. And it was almost like she was like in a courtroom presenting her case. And even though the critics said, well, she wasn't trying cases in courtroom to those people in the audience she was presenting the case that she was the district attorney that should be should be reelected and this is my record so I always say that her her running mate this year was a record it reminds me of the Coriel Stevens race back in the 80s he never really tried cases back right. then no one right. knew who he was he beats Charlie Coslett in a hard-fought campaign he was from Hazelden not the Valley and he won but he was able to connect the voters right and, and in this case, again, as well, I, 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 I do think, I think you're right about the, the way that she presented herself, but also the, she, uh, the, the statistics uh, as well that she kept on mentioning. Uh, all homicides that we tried, we got convictions on. All of the cases that we were working on, we've solved. Uh, uh, each and every one of these, uh, she was nailing home uh, the points that she needed to to get the voters to, to, to still say yes, keep on going. Interesting uh, DA race up in Pike County. Yes. Ray Tonkin running for re-election, doesn't win in the primary, wins in a ride-in, facing Kelly Gaughan, wins. And interesting because there again, crime, the, the Freen case is uh, one of the, was, the major was, factors. Was Freen a running mate for one or the other? Could have been, yeah. yeah. It's going to be cool and here, but the but, name right. Freen was right. so high profile. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I think two things going on with this particular race. The first thing is, first off, I don't think people are comfortable with defense attorneys who are running for office for to become prosecutor. I just don't see that. And the other thing is that I think the Eric Freen case, the voters in Pike County, as well as Ray Tonkin got a do-over. Because I think that as the Freen case and the monumental national um, uh, event of this particular case became evident to people, I think they thought, well, okay, we're gonna have to go back with uh, Mr. Uh, Tonkin. Yeah. There's a continuity there. Yeah. Uh, from from the the uh, incident itself on through the capture, now on into the uh, actual court case, I think people did do feel more comfortable saying uh, we want this to continue. I think I think you're right, Dave, with with the defense attorneys too. I think that you saw that in both of these counties in the DA races. Uh, that that was hyped a little bit too. Uh, this defense attorney actually is going to help the criminals sometimes because that's their job. But it was it was framed in a way. Do you really want? to deal with that in as as a, now a DA. So I think that helped uh, uh, Salvantis and I think I think it helped uh, in the Pike County race too. Right, and yeah. primaries can be a scary thing. And I think, again, as I said, Ray Tonkin got a do-over because yeah. uh, he could run as a Democratic uh, candidate. What if there were a Democratic candidate on that side? Well, we are going to take another quick break and when we come back, we'll continue our uh, discussion here. You can find out more on pahomepage.com under the Newsmakers and your local election headquarters link. We'll be right back. Election headquarters, this is Newsmakers. I'm Jane Ann Bugged along with Andy Mahalshik. And today we are joined by Dr. David Sosar and David Yonkai. 
both uh, helping us understand politics in our area, giving their opinion can on that. Can that happen? Yeah, can, 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 can we understand that? <laughs> it is impossible. Um, and, and it's always interesting here, yeah. especially in northeastern and central Pennsylvania. Let's move up to Lackawanna County with a commissioner's race. Interesting there. We have um, Pat O'Malley, Jerry Notoriani on the on the uh, Democratic side, and then we have the first woman commissioner, uh, Lor Lorraine Cummings, but a little challenge there now because there might be a little bit of a, uh, a recount in those votes from Bill Jones. Let's uh, talk a little bit about Lackawanna County. Well, that race was incredible in the sense that I wrote that there were five different there were five different races going on. They were supposedly running as teams, Nateriani and uh, O'Malley. O'Malley was the incumbent commissioner. I wish we had a chart, but he became, mm -hmm. uh, he used to be a Republican. He ran as a Democrat with Jim Wansack. Jim Wansack um, got beat, and uh, during the Terry and he ran as a team. So both of them were running as a team. In the summertime of political events, I never saw them together. That's just a, an opinion of mine. Um, Cummings and Bill Jones ran. Last time, Bill Jones ran with Pat O'Malley. Malley as a Republican. Uh, he came in fourth. Uh, Cummings was a Tea Party activist. And then there was Charlie Spano, who was running in the Republican primary. But because of a mailer the Jones sent, he was unhappy. So all five were running separate campaigns. The Democratic registration held true for Notariani and O'Malley. Cummings, I believe, is going to be um, the, uh, you know, the commissioner, even though there's a challenge, because I think that she has enough votes to go, go through that. But it's significant because out of all the Democrats in the Democratic County who has tried to become the first woman county commissioner, it is a Republican county commissioner and it is a woman who basically founded the Tea Party in Lackawanna mm -hmm. County. So that is fascinating to me. And Luzerne County has had three uh, women county commissioners, I believe, yes. Ethel Price and uh, Rose, Tucker Rose Tucker and Mary Ann Petrilla. Right. So those three. So this is kind of uh, fascinating and it's going to be interesting to see how Cummings gets along with those two county commissioners because her views are are, are, are are very conservative in terms of taxes and in terms of fiscal responsibility and that is it's, it's going to be interesting to watch and yeah I'm sure you remember the old commissioner meetings with Cross and Weidman and um, you know Janicek and everything mm. this is going to be a repeat, a repeat I was covering it I, I'm, I'm dating myself I started when Chink Cross and God rest his soul was on the on the commission he passed yeah. away suddenly yes and that the Luzerne County dynamics was was off the charts and you may see that in Lackawanna County then you'll see the problem Probably is more she's going to play the watchdog oh, yeah. because of what she's what she's done and, and isn't that the role of the minority commissioner anyway? She is going to be the first true watchdog in Lackawanna County. She's not going to be worried about teaming up with somebody else right. or doing a coalition. She is going to drive them because crazy. that's her job. <laughs> yes, that's how she got elected. Yes, and, but but she's going to hold true to it, which is a shock to some people. Yeah. Well. Let me just ask this quickly, uh, and I know you had commented on this in the newspaper, that a lot of little races didn't have candidates to right. run. Right. Um, so what happens now if there wasn't somebody selected for an office? Are you appointed or are you... There'll be a lot of appointments made at this point. Uh, 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 actually, what you'll find is that there were a number of races where nobody was running, but there were write-ins. Uh, and even, albeit that there may have only been a handful of write-ins, that person will have won the race. Uh, all it takes is a handful, of, usually to win, even one. Uh, and, and a lot of those will, will actually have been settled within the election itself. Where there isn't, then they're going to have to make some appointments, and th that's the only way that you can do it. Very quickly, Luzerne County Council, we're really off the radar for, for many people. Right. It's a very important position. Do you see an effort to go back to the commissioner form? Considering all the controversy in recent years, I think they. I think there will be an attempt. There are certainly county. There are certainly county council members that will try to do that. But I think for now, um, and it'll stay the way that it is. I think the reason why it was off the radar is that there were so many. Uh, it, it, they weren't really campaigning that hard, you know, because the Republicans didn't even put up a full slate. And but I think that this is the best chance for Republican representation because you have Gene Kelleher on there, and you have uh, Bob Schnee, who basically was a Democrat but ran on the Republican side, and that was a significant thing. So I think you're going to see. No, I, I don't think they're going to go back yet, but there will be attempts. I do think. And, and I was one who advocated when I talked to, to the government study. I always believed that, that the 11 is just too unmanageable. Mm -hmm. I, I would still, uh, if they were going to review this and they want to keep uh, this form 
that they have now, I would still encourage them to reduce it to more manageable seven. But I still think as well that it ought to be uh, uh, within certain districts. Yeah. So that everybody feels comfortable, but it's a manageable number. Take one more quick break and we'll wrap things up when Newsmakers from your local election headquarters returns right after this. Welcome back to Newsmakers, your local election headquarters. We have to talk about the presidential can uh, race coming up, of course. The Republicans going at it, the Democrats maybe not so much. Your take on it, Dave. Well, the debate last night, I thought, I, and I watched both of them, I thought Bobby Jindal absolutely blew himself out of the water last night. I think he made the other three candidates look much better than what they were able to uh, because of, of, of his constant attacking. In the main uh, debate, I, I thought that uh, uh, actually uh, Senator Rubio, Senator Cruz uh, did well. I, th and I also thought that uh, uh, actually Jeb Bush did a, a lot better than what some people were giving him credit for. He was on more of a game. He's not going to be exciting like some of the others are, but he did a much better job last night. Is Trump a contender or a pretender? I think Come last on. night hurt him tremendously. I, I, he, he, in the polls for voting, a lot of people still like him because of the name, but I thought he was way off his game last night and the economy showed that. This is a prelude to next November and two words, Romney Clinton. Hmm. It's going to be Romney Clinton because I think the Republicans are going to decimate each other and they're going to need to come up with somebody who is going to be a, a reasonable alternative. And that reasonable alternative is wherever he's at with his car elevators and you know, enjoying <laughs> life right now, he's going to be tan, rested, and ready to go. And I could be wrong. But that's, we are recording this. And, Romney and Clinton. There so, you go. And we'll, and we'll follow up on it in future editions from your local election headquarters newsmakers. <laughs> For uh, David Sosar, David Young, Kai, Thank you. Andy Mahalchik, <laughs> and everyone behind the scenes. I'm Jane Ann Bugda. Thank you so much for making us part of your day. And we'll talk again next time. We'll see you on pahomepage.com under the Newsmakers and your local election headquarters link.